yesterday we brought you the story of an artwork that was vandalized in Cape Town. But as one piece is damaged, so another will be unveiled. A massive star made out of some of the fencing around Robben Island will be lit up on Signal Hill tonight. There's been discussion on social media on the role of public art. I'm joined now by the Associate Professor for the Center of Film and Media Studies at the University of Cape Town, Adam Haupt. Adam, thank you so much for your time this morning. There'll be more such sculptures coming. We know we, we saw the, the debacle around the sunglass sculpture yesterday. Today we have, we have this Christopher Swift uh, sculpture being unveiled uh, on Signal Hill. Have the city of Cape Town and the artists involved compromised themselves by participating in these projects? Well, uh, the question that I was, I was asked to speak to um, was whether public art should receive private funding, whether you know, the artistic integrity of, of the work and whether the public interest uh, is, is being served. And I think, look, the, the quick answer to that is I don't think public art should be funded privately. I don't think uh, that the city of Cape Town is doing enough to ensure that corporate entities uh, are prevented from appropriating public space. The Ray-Ban Ray commercial dressed up as public art, the Ray-Ban commercial is a good example of how the city uh, seems to be um, allowing corporate access um, to the public space more easily, more readily than it allows civil society to access public space. And the, the Tokolos intervention, the Tokolos culture jam of the artwork uh, is a case in point. It draws attention to the, to, to the racialized inequalities in, in, in the South African context, but also the, the unequal access that, that various citizens have to public space. Are artists resorting to private funding simply to be able to create because they wouldn't otherwise be able to? Well, I think uh, the, the big issue, the big issue is that we need clear policy on how public art should be dealt with. How do we ensure that the public interest is served? How do we ensure that participants in public arts projects are representative of the broader demographic in South Africa? This collective is, is by the looks of it, the artists are largely white or exclusively white. That can't be right. They come from a very specific kind of class background. That can't be right either. I think we need clear policy on a provincial and a national level that guides what public art should look like and who should participate, whose voices are heard. But more importantly, we need coherent guidance from the Department of Arts and Culture. We need very, very clear leadership. We don't just need greater financial support for arts initiatives, but we need leadership, leadership in the form of educational uh, um, projects. Um, I'm thinking that arts education at the level of primary and secondary schools, in public schools, it could be a lot better, a lot could be done to integrate arts education into um, the curriculum to develop people's critical literacy skills, to, to develop their lateral thinking skills. Um, you know, arts and humanities education is, is in, you know, these are important elements of developing a full rounded uh, student, but also a full rounded citizen who is critically literate enough to participate in uh, debates about the common good in a functional democracy. That is sadly lacking. The focus in education is largely on maths and science. And at the same time, we have so many talented people in, in the area of the arts, young people who could be developed, who could be encouraged to participate more fully, to, to, to untap their, 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 you know, their, their skills on a creative level. Um, so I think there's a serious gap. And I think what happened here was a set of people opportunistically saw the gap that in, you know, in, in policy, saw the, the, the shortfall, stepped in and took advantage of the situation. And uh, it's, it's a pity that public funds are involved in this project because it doesn't serve the public interest. It does not serve the broader public. It serves an, an elite set of interests. Thanks so much for talking to us this morning. Associate Professor for the Center of Film and Media Studies at UCT, Adam Hunt.